Hello, kitties. This is Alice Cooper on the Alan Handelman Show, where rock meets talk. She struts into the room. Well, I don't know her. But with a magnifying glance, I just sort of look her over. It's great to have you back. What we're doing now is actually going back uh, about five years. I talked to Phyllis Diller. We lost her recently, if you haven't heard, at the age of 95. She had just turned 90 and announced she wasn't going to perform anymore. She did a great show. And she also, there was a documentary out. That's how we got the interview. And it was great to talk to her. I got to talk to her about a lot of things. Often, when people reach a certain age, you just forget about them. We always included them in with the rock stars and The other guests we have on with Al Lewis, Grandpa Munster, Ernest Borgnine, Jim Backus. We've always done that. Pat Cooper. So this is a great conversation. I think this is a good time to play it. And it's interesting because here, and I kind of cringe when I hear it. I remember the day, but she told a joke and I wasn't listening. I was distracted, you know, which happens in radio a lot. So uh, I missed that little cue and I was embarrassed. But see if you can pick up on... Uh, the joke she was trying to say that I screwed up. Here's one of the things I want you to talk about that I learned from watching this DVD, Good Night, We Love You. And I think this is going to be interesting to every one of you listening right now. Whenever you would see Phyllis on TV or at a club and she'd come out in, uh, on stage, there was five minutes that she demanded silence and she didn't want to talk to anybody. Kind of like David Letterman, who's a lot like that. Tell everybody about that silent period, because I found that interesting and very revealing. Share that. I, well, I, I learned that at the very beginning, uh, in 1955, which is half a century ago, uh, that uh, you can't just walk out and really be the leader of whatever audience is there. You can't just walk out and, and, be, and just be one of them. You have to have your head screwed on very tight. And I always had to have five minutes at least of total silence where I simply uh, got my, my whole psyche ready to take this audience uh, on that lovely ride. Right. It's like, you, it's like you're altering your consciousness, kind of. Getting into that's, that that's zone. Where, that's what, exactly what it is. Yeah. It's where you become the leader, so you go out and you lead. Yeah, Letterman does that because he's very shy. And to get into... I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, I'll, t- I'll tell you what. Most comics are extremely shy people. I know Carol Burnett is. That's probably very true. That uh, is very she true. To to, she used to go to parties and stay, stay in the bedroom with the, with the coach. That's a joke, Alan. Mm-hmm. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> actually, I, I feel, uh, listen, Stay with me, I, well, no, Stay I was, with be, me. I was being distracted because I'm watching the phones ring here, and and I and I got to be honest with you. When you said your last uh, a few words, I was zoning out on on a distraction. So I apologize, Ms. Diller. Please, yeah, you because know, that's I, all right. Yeah, um, yeah, that that is that's interesting about that zone. That's another thing. The people may not realize when you watch Phyllis, you might think that that laugh, that that well, classic see, laugh. Just did, but, but Alan, you just gave a perfect example of divided thought. Okay. You see, you you were, you were with the 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 phones, not with me. Yeah, for that split, that's you know that's right. For about the 20, 15, 20 seconds, I was getting a, a message here, and I was distracted. So you know that that's part and of that's it. why, uh, and that's why we should all vote against people being able to talk on the phone and drive the car at the same time. God, that's a great I'm very point. Very much against. Yeah, that's a great point. That is a great point. Well, I, listen. It, gonna, we're going to save a lot of lives. It should, you should not be on the phone driving a car. I want you to comment on the Michael Richards thing. You mentioned in this great uh, documentary, Good Night, We Love You, that when you get out there, you got all kinds of people you have to deal with. You played those rough clubs in the beginning where there were the gangster types, smoky places. And here you are, a frail beginner. I mean, you know, just a, a young girl with these tough guys. You had to get into that zone. Talk a little bit about when it goes wrong and what happened with Michael Richards. Do you want to comment a little bit about that? Uh, well, I, uh, the, I, there were heckling. There was heckling. 
uh, I pretty much didn't ever allow heckling. I, I'll tell you how I did it. Okay. I work so fast and seriously, and I, ha- I must say my timing is that of a musician. Therefore, if somebody wanted to heckle me, they'd have, a, they'd have to make a, an appointment because either the <laughs> audience is laughing or I'm talking. You see what I mean? Yeah, there was no so dead I air. Left, I left no air, no dead air. Right, no dead air. Boy, de- dead air just invites it. Right. And the, uh, Michael, Michael uh, yeah. Richard has made a terrible error. Do you think he was just so angry that he just used anything he could say to hurt the uh, people he was angry at? Uh, or do you think it was deeper than that? Oh, no. He, he, it's, he is obviously suffering with a lot of anger. How do we know? Maybe his girlfriend just dropped him. Right. Or maybe he had a worse hairdo. Right. Hey, listen, the, he had a lot of stress. You're right. The career hasn't been going well, and he was embarrassed, and he was kind of new to stand-up. He's an actor, but he's not a stand-up guy, you know? Well, so. maybe he is in a stand-up. He, he shouldn't have been stooding up there. That's exactly right. Let's take some phone calls right now for Phyllis okay. Diller celebrating what's hitting the stores today. Good night. We love you. The life and legend of Phyllis Diller, and this includes her whole show the whole final show and a lot of other things for the great Phyllis Diller. Let's go to Jason on line one. Jason, you're on with Phyllis. Hi. I saw uh, a whole different side of Phyllis. It was back in the 70s in Chicago. I was a style editor of the Chicago Sun-Times. Uh-huh. And she was doing a show in Chicago, and I saw her out of character and realized this is one good-looking woman. So we shot a fashion layout. She came over after the show. She shot all night in the American furniture market. Brought, it, uh, brought her, uh, with it, with it, I think she called her friend Omar, that, uh, and wow. brought a whole trunk full of jewelry, some of which was extremely good. She, she hit her good jewelry in with a huge pile of, uh, of costume jewelry. And she worked, and we had her on the cover of Chicago Style magazine, and we got more response from that from women who, who saw, that, saw that they could be beautiful. Wow. It, yeah, it was a very nice moment. And I, I, afterwards, I lived in Beverly Hills, and I, then I found out that she had one of the most beautiful homes in Beverly Hills. She was known as one of the finest entertainers in Beverly Hills. And then she, she's a concert pianist. <laughs> There's so much to her that uh, people don't know just from uh, watching the old act. Yeah. Well, uh, Jason, I remember Jason. I remember the whole, the whole layout and the wonderful fashion spread. Oh, God. One was a, a purple velvet dress. And Omar of Omaha was my own designer. Yes. And she did my whole wardrobe and did a wonderful job for 17 years. But, you know, you know I'm, I love clothing. I love beauty. And I love things to be beautiful. And I do remember that. And that was a, a, such a thrill, Jason, oh, that wow. anybody noticed. It was, a, it, it was a wonderful time. I heard, did you have a fire at your house? Uh, no fire. Good, good. Somebody had told me that you had a fire, and I was wondering if anything had gotten damaged because it, uh, the, the no. house is perfection. I, well, I've you know, the, the, the great, the great thing about this DVD, uh, it, she takes you into her home. She shows you what she has in her closets, uh, in the clothes, and, and all the suitcases that have all the kitchen utensils, and how she cooks on the road. And her, it's just really, a, you, you're really gonna like it, Jason. Well, Phyllis Diller is one of the elegant women of Hollywood. People don't realize that. I love you. (laughs) We had a lot of fun that night. You worked like a trooper all night long. I mean, the sun was coming up before you were done, and you didn't complain. That is true. It was a highlight of my life. Oh, that's great. And the other thing is, because you made fun of your looks, when I saw on this uh, DVD what you really looked like, you did look really good. You know, you, you were so... You made fun of yourself to the point that I think people just uh, assumed that you looked a certain way, and, and that wasn't true at all. You were a good-looking woman. But you see, I had to convince them of the way I wanted them to think. Ah. Did you, was there something psych- Did you When you started to make fun of your looks, was this something you did because of a calculation that this would help me in my act? Because you had to be pretty secure to do that. 
Well, I, I suppose so. But, but you see, from in, in high school, I had already become very funny and had already learned that well, comedy could uh, be a great protection against uh, a little sophomoric girly hurts. So I didn't suffer any of those slings and arrows because I always got there first with my version of everything. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I used it as a protection because well, until I got my face fixed in, in my pr- lovely facelift that I had, until then, I really had reason. There were t- I've got pictures to prove that I looked pretty bad a lot. But I didn't mind it. It worked for me. Also, I knew nothing about makeup and hair, and I my makeup was so horrendous that it helped me, you see. Very interesting. Now I've, 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 I've been taught makeup by the, the best makeup people in America. Yeah, you even invented a, 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 a hat box that you could see through, so it makes sense with all the stuff you have. Well, Jason, any th- final comments you want for her before we take another call? Well, I don't believe she's really retiring. Uh, we'll, we'll hear some more from her somehow. Is there going to be a book? There's, there is a book. It's out right now in paperback. It's called uh, Like a Lampshade in a Whorehouse. <laughs> you talk about edgy. Wow. Yeah, that's great. Hey, Jason, thanks for your call. Let's go to line two. Hey, how you doing? Doing great. I just wanted to uh, let Miss Miss Diller know I I grew up listening to her, watch her on the the uh, old roast shows, and, and and she is one of the original divas, not comedy diva. She is just a diva, and and we really appreciate all the laughs over the years, and, and she's just great. Just fantastic. Well, Jim, I thank you so much, and I, it's so thrilling to hear it from a guy. <laughs> I love we, it. I have I have got a ten year old daughter that I'm going to get the DVD tonight, and uh, I will make sure she's with me when we watch it. Oh, um, good. She'll have yeah. some laughs. I, I'm sure she'll she'll learn a, a lot and and laugh, um, and I'm sure you've got many many more years to go. It's you're just you're just fantastic. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, she is. She is. What you're listening to is my fairly recent conversation with Phyllis Diller. She was 90 years old. She did her last performance a couple of nights earlier. She announced she's retiring at uh, the age of 90. Did a few interviews, and we got that. And uh, I'm, I'm glad the way it came out. I haven't heard it myself in about five years. We'll be back. Stay tuned for more of The Alan Handelman Show. Compelling Talk Radio. Alan Handelman for the C. Crane Company. You know, this company, the C. Crane Company, has a passion for radio. And that's what Bob Crane was all about. That's why he started the company, the founder. He wanted radios and audio electronics to do more than what other companies were producing. So he started designing his own gear. And today, C-Crane products have been routinely getting award-winning reviews. Very cool stuff. Products like the Wi-Fi Antenna 2, which picks up free Wi-Fi from miles away or transmits your Wi-Fi to friends who want to share the cost. It's a very cool idea. The CC Witness, that's a small iPod-looking device that records from its built-in AM, FM radio. You can time shift, but it also records from any source, from your turntable to internet streams, and you put it on a CD. There's the FM transmitter, too, that takes your audio, again, from any source, including MP3 players, and transmits it in broadcast quality anywhere in your yard, in your house. you got to see it for yourself. Get the free catalog page after page of audio and Wi-Fi gear, radio, shortwave, scanners, LED lights, digital recorders, things you didn't even think existed. Call this toll-free number. Ask for the free catalog, 800-522-8863. That's 800-522-8863. It's a great catalog. People are going to want to borrow it. You can also go online, Crane. Dot com. That's C-C-R-A-N-E dot com. When asked, how did you hear about them? Use my name as the code, Alan. And then in the future, that code is going to give you some deep discounts when you order stuff. 
800-522-8863. Hello! Hello! Yes, indeed, friends. This is Diamond David Lee Roth. <laughs> In your ear, have no fear, on the Al Handelman Show. Yes, indeed. <laughs> It is great to have you back. By the way, the uh, website for the Alan Handelman Show is ifitrocks.com. Ifitrocks.com. Join me on Facebook under my name, Alan Handelman, A-L-L-A-N, Handelman, H-A-N-D-E-L-M-A-N. On Twitter, at If It Rocks. All right, we're going to continue with my conversation with uh, Phyllis Diller. Goes back a few years. Very revealing. It's interesting. I remember... I was told uh, you must address her as Miss Diller and make sure the calls do too. Uh, that's the respect that she wants. I, I, you know, I, that's fine. And I think I slipped here, as you'll hear. And, but she was very cool about that. I don't know if that was a PR person uh, putting their own opinion in. By the way, coming up later, that drop you heard from David Lee Roth, you're going to hear that interview where that all happened it was amazing it was crazy it was out it was sex drugs rock and roll i was new in the business and he let me have it in a in a fun out of control kind of surreal way it was a lot of fun that's coming up in the third hour okay let's get back to my conversation with phyllis diller this goes back to 2006 and phyllis it's great to have you back miss diller i i shouldn't have called you by your first name there i apologize but uh miss diller right. i know that respect Go ahead. You can call me anything. Yeah, but I want to be, I want to show respect because I have a lot of respect for you, and I know that that's very important to you, etiquette and manners. Your, we met your family in this DVD, and you yeah. did a hell of a job raising these kids, and, and uh, you're a remarkable person. People don't realize you, there's a lot to you that uh, they didn't know. For well, I've been busy all my life, and I like to be busy. And I'm busy today. Is the stories, are the stories that you talk about when you do your stand-up, is it mostly from real-life situations or is it completely fabricated? Well, they're all based on real, they're based on real life, but I call it hyperbole because everything is exaggerated to the greatest of idiocy. I mean, a level of, of, of fiction that is... Uh, Oh, uh, you know, it's fun, fun, fun. It's called hyperbole, mm -hmm. where you exaggerate and make up. You know, you say things like, she was serving hors d'oeuvres with a bow and arrow. Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's a exactly, that's exactly, that's a great way of putting it. Yeah, you know, like, like, you know, things where, I'm in the kitchen, I, I tried to stir this pudding I made it. I made a pudding and I tried to stir it, and I couldn't get the spoon out. And I stirred it, and that went round and round and round. And that, right, right. That fanned the hair. The, that fanned the hell out of the fire. <laughs> and the fire was just a little grease fire in the sink. Oh wow! You know stuff like that, greasy things. Yeah, these are the kind of things that make... ugly, ugly, ugly stuff. But you got a hyperbole. And you know, a lot of people think that that word is hyperbole, and they think it's a place where very nervous athletes play. Right. <laughs> um, it's a hyperbole. So that's that's it. All that stuff and that great laugh. That laugh. It's all just fiction. But not the laugh. The laugh is real. I mean, that. Yeah, the laugh's real. Can't help it. Came with the kid. All right, let's go to the calls. A lot of fans want to talk to you. We don't have a whole lot of time left. Let's go to Mark, line one. You're next with Phyllis Diller. Hi, Mark. Hi, Alan. Hi, Phyllis. How are you? Hello, Mark. Uh, you know, I, I got to tell you a quick story here. When I was younger, I used to sneak into NBC and Burbank quite a bit. Yeah. And uh, I remember you were either in Studio 2 or 4 doing your show back in the late 60s. And yeah. I, I snuck into your studio, and this was no audience or anything. You were sitting there in the bleachers watching someone else rehearse, and I, I can't remember who it was. But my cousin and I, when we snuck into the studio, we sat down about four seats away from you, and 
minute or two, you looked over at us and, and you said, I think that's pretty funny, don't you? You know, the, the bit that was going on on the stage. And you know, I thought it was so classy that, you know, you didn't know us from Adam, but, you know, you acknowledged our presence there. And it, it was pretty cool. I, and I, I think you're a real class act. Yeah. Well, I thank you, Mark. My golly. That was a long time ago. It was and a long I, time ago. I, I remember you know, those... that same, same era. I saw you uh, uh, doing a Bob Hope special also at NBC. And it was so funny because it was a sketch, an underwater sketch, where you and Bob Hope and, and someone else, I can't remember who, uh, you had this part of the sketch where this big fake octopus was coming from behind a rock. <laughs> and do, you remember that? do you remember that sketch? No, was, I don't. How could I forget it? <laughs> I was probably scared out of my wits. It was so funny because uh, you you probably had to do it thirty times, you know, knowing how Bob Hope and you guys all work together, you know, there, it's it, people don't realize how many edits are in that tape. But it was so funny because the octopus came out for about the twentieth time and the eye fell out, and okay. Bob goes, "Oh look, it's Sammy Davis Jr." <laughs> oh. Well, he had a line for everything. Uh, well, that didn't go on the air, but I'll tell you what, you laughed so hard, it was nonstop, and I'll never forget it. Oh, yeah, we, we had fun times. Hey, Mark, it was great. that's so cool that you called in. I'm glad you got in, man. Thanks a lot. Yeah. yeah thanks, Alan. Thanks, Phyllis. Bye. You're hearing my fairly recent conversation with Phyllis Diller. It was when she was 90 years old and retired from the business. We have one more segment left. And later from the archives in the third hour, David Lee Roth. As we continue with my conversation with Phyllis Diller from the year 2006, talking about her life, as she said, she did her last show at that point, And this is one of the few interviews she did. In America, there's a great story uh, in this uh, DVD where, you know, she idolized Bob Hope. And it was a really interesting story. You bombed one night in this club. It was one of the worst nights for you. And you were so embarrassed because you knew Bob Hope, your idol, was in the audience. And you tried to hide from the guy. But he sought you out after the show. Tell everybody about how much that meant to you. Well, I tried to sneak out because I couldn't face it. I mean, I... I had never met Bob Hope, and it was early in my career, and it was so embarrassing to think that my idol, I had idolized him on radio as a teenager, and to think that he had to come in and see me bomb, see a lousy show, and I tried to sneak out, and he, he saw me, and he jumped up and ran over and grabbed me and said, you're great. Wow. And that was the turning point of my young career. And you stayed very close with Bob right through the end. You you, you celebrate the great Bob Hope, and uh, uh, you've been in movies with him. Just an amazing. That's just one of the stories you're going to hear. Another quick one. You mentioned how the caller just mentioned how she took the time at that TV show to show them a little attention. He got she got a fan letter back in the '70s from a 15 year old kid who today turns out to be a uh, well-known uh, TV producer, writer, director, Jack Kelly. And he was 15 years old in Raleigh and asked her for some advice in getting the show business. And you sent him not only a two-page letter, when he answered your letter back saying, I can't get the book in Raleigh, North Carolina, you bought the book and sent it to him. Just a fan. That's the kind of stuff that you do that people don't know about. Well, it's my little charities, personal charities. Yeah. And that's what makes life worth living. That's, that's just one true. of the, that's one of the things. Now we have a lot of people want to talk to you. Can you can you stay with us a few more minutes and take some more calls? Surely. Oh, great. We appreciate that. Let's go to Mark Line Three. How are you today? Excellent. Hi. Phyllis can hear you. Speak up, nice and loud, Mark. I'm sorry. I just have a quick question. I swear, many many years ago, I saw Miss Diller on the Groucho Marx show as a contestant. And I don't believe her occupation at that time was comedian. I believe she was a, a young professional, if I remember correctly. But my my wife uh, uh, thinks I'm, uh, you know, kidding her all the time. But I swear to God, Miss Diller was a contestant on the Groucho Marx show many, many years ago. And I'd just like to know if that was true. Interesting. Well, it was in 1956, and I had been doing comedy for just one year. But they brought me on as just... A person on off the street, any old lady. 
So I, I won the bet with my wife. I appreciate that it. That was you won the bet? Yeah. Good, good. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. All right, good. Congratulations. All right, good talking to you, uh, Mark. And let's go to Janice, line four. Hi, how are y'all doing tonight? Doing great. Well, good. Listen, um, Miss Dill, I was wondering if you could share a bit of wisdom with us. And having such a long and illustrious career and being a woman and uh, mainly a man's business kind of uh, environment, how? what was the most profound um, value or ethic that you held dearest to you to get through all that? Wow, good question. Well, 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 repeat what she said for me. She wants to know, of, of all the things in your life, uh, what would you say was one of the toughest life lessons that you learned? Or maybe, uh, is that basically it, Janice? What could she teach us as a life lesson that she learned that is, uh, is just so profound in her life? Janice, is yes, that? Yes, that was a value or ethic that really helped you succeed and keep your, um, your vision alive. Oh, well, number one, you just simply have to be completely positive. At all times, you mustn't ever allow any doubt. Uh, you, you should clean your vocabulary up uh, from negative words. You, you've heard people say, I'm dying to see him. Mm -hmm. I'm dying to go to the show. See, I never would say that sentence. I would never say that. Uh, God knows. The moment you're born, you're dying. Mm -hmm. but it's no use giving power to that word. And in, in other way, in other words, I always never accepted any negative thoughts from people. Uh, you'd be amazed how your family and people who love you will say the most awful things that are negative. And they don't mean to be hurting you, but you don't. You don't need to be hurt by those things. Just protect yourself. Keep your own thoughts and your own mind completely positive. Oh, I like that, that advice. Is, yeah, isn't that absolutely phenomenal? Because I think you're absolutely right. We look at our lives so many times and take that uh, bit of information that people feed into us and don't digest it well, and end up not feeling good about ourselves. When indeed um, you're telling us if we just keep that positive, that'll be that, that line that helps us throughout life. That is incredible. Thank you very much for that. Uh, you're welcome. Janice, great Thanks. talking to you. Appreciate your call. Very interesting. Yeah, that's true because sometimes in life when you get a, you know, a bad curve or something just brings you down, it's so hard to stay positive. But if you can, somehow muster that energy, it kind of... Uh, I think that's what she's talking about. If you can stay positive, you'll get back on track. You'll get that energy. I mean, it's kind of a cosmic connection thing. Uh, uh, that's great. Okay, let's go to uh, Frank. You're next on line one. You're on with Phyllis Diller. Hi, Frank. Welcome to the show. Hi. I uh, hope you guys are having a great night. Uh, Ms. Diller, it's a pleasure and an honor to be able to talk to you. Uh, I, I, I hate it when they classify you as a female entertainer for the simple reason uh, I think you're one of the top one, uh, comedians, whether male or female. And it, it was just an honor to be able to watch you and listen to you because you're a blast. Well, thank you very much, Frank. I appreciate that. Now, you guys, when you call in and you have all these nice things to say, that's great. But I also have a question because she hears all these nice compliments and she says, thank you. But at the same time, ask her a question, too. Let's, uh, you know, feel free to... Uh, you know, ask her something about her career or Maybe about her Frank doesn't have a question. Yeah, well, okay, well, that's true. All right, well, Frank, I appreciate your call. You guys well, are just... Thank you very much you're, for time. You're very welcome. 866-482-1011. And there are so many people that think you are the greatest. Like Ricky on line three, you are next. Okay, yeah, I just want to say uh, I can't believe I'm actually talking to Phyllis Diller and uh, and I, it's, a, it's a pleasure and uh, so much. And anyway, I just want to tell you, uh, uh, Miss Diller, uh, and I'm one of your. I'm probably one of your younger fans. I'm only 44, but I've watched you since I was uh, ever since I can remember. And you're one of the greatest comedians of all time. You just, oh man, you just crack me up so much. I can't hardly get over how funny you are, and just you know your outfits and just everything. But uh, anyway, I was wondering how uh, uh, how could I like get some of your uh, DVDs or something of your of your uh, stand up comedy acts? Because I've always wondered uh, where I could. Uh, I never see them in the stores. I don't think. All right, There's calm down, Ricky. To. Calm down, Ricky. I got good news oh. for you. Just out today. The uh, DVD, Good Night, We Love You, The Life and Legend of Phyllis Diller. 
And this uh, is in all the stores that came out today. It's not only a documentary where it takes you into her home. You meet her family. You meet the people she works with and used to work with and all the other great comedians that are paying tribute to her. But her whole last show, her whole final show is on here. So, yeah, that that's your answer there, Rick. Okay, is that uh, you'll say goodnight.com? Well, actually, is that her, how you get it? Yeah, her website is goodnightwelovyou.com. That's it. So, uh, uh, what is that now? Good night. Good we, night. We oh, love you. Good night. We love you. Okay. Dot okay, com. No, okay. I, yeah. All right, good Ricky. Night, we love you. Okay. All right. I appreciate your call, Ricky. Bye bye. Let's uh, quickly uh, go to Patrick here. We are just a few more minutes with uh, Phyllis Diller. Patrick, line two. You are next with legendary Patrick comedian Diller. Phyllis Diller. Hi, Patrick. Go ahead. Hi, Miss Diller. It's a pleasure to talk to you. I have all of your old comedy albums, the records you did back in the 60s. And I think people should know, if they are not that familiar with your act, that uh, those comedy albums are an excellent introduction to your uh, fast dialogue, your laugh, uh, the response to the audience, things like that. And those albums were really a great way to learn about what your comedy was like. And I remember seeing you on TV back when I was a child in the 60s. Yeah, I'm sure just, you were. You're absolutely wonderful. Yes, well, how nice of you to let me know this. How many albums, how many albums did you make? Oh, golly, maybe 12. Wow, I'd like to get my hands on those. Or something like that. And Phyllis, thank you so much. Ms. Diller, it is an honor, and uh, thank you, and congratulations on this great DVD, and I hope you have a great holiday. I thank you very much, darling, for the time and the promotion, and I'm sure that you've sold a lot of, of those little DVDs for me. Well, it was my pleasure, because I know when I recommend something, if it's good, the listeners are going to agree, and uh, I wouldn't do you it otherwise. It's a terrific show. I love it. All right. Thank you, Ms. Diller. Have a great night. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Well, there you go. My fairly recent conversation with Phyllis Stiller. She was 90 years old. We lost her last week at the age of 95. When we get back, there's a new book. It's called...